I'm Bethany Anderson, and you're listening to The Hope Adventure. Welcome to episode 38. The Hope Adventure is a place for God's stories and conversations, all with the intent of reminding us that the greatest adventure is His presence. And His presence is always embedded with hope. I want to be really candid with you and let you know that recording today's episode was pretty difficult for me. It just feels so weighty, what's happening in our world right now. There's a lot of emotions. People are in different places with it, and I want to be sensitive to that. But I also know that God is a God of life and hope, and our true hope is found in Him. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things, all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. A couple nights ago on April 4th, 4-4, I woke up at 4.44 in the morning. And oftentimes this happens, I feel like God's woken me in the night for a reason. So I open my Bible and I start reading and I start praying and He led me to a couple of scriptures. One of them was Isaiah 44, another set of fours. And in some research that I did, I found that Jesus's ministry on earth was 44 months and four days. And I was learning this on 4-4. The reason I say that is because God is a God of purpose. His design is intentional. And this episode was hard to record because I just wasn't sure what God wanted to say. There was so much in my heart and so much in my mind I wanted to share with you, so kind of narrowing it down. But what's really been in the back of my mind the whole time is we're entering into Holy Week, and what a gift to spend time in His presence. So as we go into today's episode, that's the backbone. It's all about His presence and what He's saying and doing in the world and what His invitation is to us. So grab a cup of coffee, some tea, in your PJs, wherever you are. You're probably not in your car commuting at this point, but I really hope that you can just tune in, open up your heart, and let Him really speak to you. My prayer is that you walk away feeling encouraged. Are you ready? Let's go. If you've been listening to this podcast, you'll know that I've been a Christian for a long time. In fact, I share my story in episode seven called The Power of Story, and then I go into my call into ministry a little bit deeper in episode 16, All Along. But the reason I say that is because we are in an unprecedented time and season. None of us have experienced anything like what we're experiencing now. And I don't know about you, but I have had so many thoughts swirling in my mind for the past couple weeks. I think at this point, as I'm recording this podcast, I'm on day 20 or 21 of shelter in place, isolation, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. And so I've had a lot of time to think and pray and process, just like you have, I imagine. The reason I bring that up is because I have found in this season, and actually here's the reality of my everyday and my heart's desire every day, is that Jesus, His presence, God's nearness and with me-ness in my life is the only lifeline. In the stripping away of every idol, everything that I have put above him, he is what remains and he is the one thing that I want to remain. I want to share a small story of something that happened when I was in Europe. I reference a little bit about my trip on podcast episode 35, Wonder Seeds. And I want to go into a deeper dive into something that I experienced while I was in Rome. My friend and I had been traveling all through Europe, visiting different cities and places and meeting different people in ministry, and simply just traveling with this backdrop of the question, 
God, where are you and what are you doing in this place? What are you inviting us into? What do you want to say to us? And so we were really intentional about creating space to meet with him. Well, we went to Rome and we found ourselves in the Mamertine prison. It is the prison where Paul and Peter were both imprisoned at some point. It's a really tiny place. There was not very many tourists there. And there was a couple of floors. There was like three different floors. And at the very bottom of this prison was this dank, cold, dingy, wet cell. It was so small. And there was rock wall everywhere. And there was just moisture coming up from the ground. And they had this metal walkway that you could walk on across the prison floor. It's very fragile. It's very old, as you can imagine. And I sat there with my friend, and we decided that we wanted to have a moment of consecration of our lives and just a time to create space to meet with God and encounter Him in this really dark place that held a lot of significance for us as believers. So we sat on this metal walkway. There was no one else there. And we just asked God to speak to our hearts and to just give us a glimpse of what he was saying and what he was doing. My friend prayed for the same anointing of Paul and Peter, that we would be people who would carry his name for his kingdom's sake, no matter the cost, even to death. And I remember I was sitting there in the silence and I asked God just to show me a glimpse of himself in that place. And all of a sudden, I looked at these walls, these walls of stone that had been there for a long time that carried lots of stories. And I saw this thick, rich, honey covering the walls. I saw this in my mind's eye. It wasn't like I could actually see the honey on the walls. But as a side note, one of the things that God has been inviting me into lately is that when he gives me these visions and images of what he's doing, that it's more real than what I can touch, taste, see, or feel with my own eyes, with my own senses. And so in my mind's eye, I'm scanning this room and I see this rich, healing honey oil. And I'm just overcome with his goodness because it's as if he was saying their praise and their glorification of who God was even in the hard, dark, lonely times of isolation that turned into this beautiful, rich, healing honey oil. After we left the prison, the next day we were in Bologna. I was meeting with some friends, some new friends, a lot of missionaries there, and we ended up having a lunch together. And during the lunch, the ministry that I am a part of, Royal Corporation, you guys have heard me talk about them, every day we pray Ephesians 3.20 at 320. And we're asking God for his more, for his abundance, for him to do the incredible, impossible, unbelievable things. And so I was at lunch with these uh, women mostly, and my prayer alarm went off. And so I invited these women to pray just for God's more and for him to do all that we can ask or imagine and be on for his glory and for his sake. And these girls joined in prayer with me. And one of the girls at the table, she started praying. This turned into like a 20 minute, 25 minute powerhouse radical prayer session. And if you're somebody that doesn't believe um, that prayer changes things, I would just encourage you to get around somebody who's passionate about praying or an intercessor. Um, Anyway, so we had this prayer session, and this girl just started prophesying. She started speaking things out into the atmosphere, 
And she started speaking about how the healing oil from Rome, from the epicenter of the nation, would cover Italy and would become this healing balm. And it was it would be from the legacy of the saints and those who had gone before to pave the way for the kingdom of God. I tell you this because they had no idea that just the day before I had sat in the prison in Rome and that God had shown me this healing oil. And it was like this picture of legacy that I felt, this significant thing that God was doing in the nation of Italy through the faithfulness and obedience of people like Paul and Peter and many that have come after them. But I sat in that room just with my mouth wide open. It was such a confirmation of what God had been showing me already. The reason I bring this up is because right now we are living in a time that is very new to us, but it is no surprise to God. Now, I'm not saying that God has caused what's happening with the coronavirus and the global pandemic, but I am absolutely 100% saying that he is using it And I believe that he is using it to wake up his church and to bring revival to the nations. Back in November, as I was preparing to go on this trip to Europe, I was doing a lot of journaling. And a lot of the time that I spend in my journal looks like me asking God, what are you saying? What do you want to say? Asking him what scripture to point me to and that kind of thing. And I wrote this whole long thing about how he is waking up the nations and he is illuminating things in the nations. Now, going into Europe, I thought that meant, oh, I'm going to go to Europe and there's going to be some amazing things that I see in these places I'm traveling. But in the aftermath of all that, where we are now, I look back and I read it with a different perspective. As we all know, Italy has been one of the epicenters of this virus Because of that, this vision and my recent encounters and experiences in Italy have been on the forefront of my heart and mind. I have had such a heart to pray for the nation of Italy, as well as our own nation, the United States, and the entire world. But for me, there is this significant weight to what I experienced in Italy back in December and January. It's like God was giving me a glimpse into what was coming in this season. And I'm a part of this amazing group of powerhouse warrior women. And we're on this Marco Polo thread where every day we're talking about what God is speaking to us. And I just want to share some of those themes with you. Some of the things that we've been talking about are around the fact that God is removing our idols. I mentioned that earlier in this episode. And Just that he's removing everything that doesn't matter, that hinders us, distracts us, keeps us busy and away from his presence. I am loving the season of life now. I don't have kids running around that I'm having to homeschool and I haven't had to drastically shift my lifestyle. But as an Enneagram 7 who loves to be on the go, that has definitely been a shift for me. But what I am loving is the freedom of time the gift of time to just sit in his presence, to go into my prayer closet, to spend time soaking in worship, reading the word, listening for his voice all around me in the situations, circumstances through friends, family, whatever that looks like. And I just feel like this is a time of stripping away where he's removing the idols to say, hey, I'm still here and I've been here all along. The other thing that I feel like he's doing is that When there is discomfort, when there's boredom, when there is a change in routine, we start thinking creatively. And I feel like this has been a total rebirth of the creative. 
If you guys follow me on social media at all, you know that I love to paint. And I have probably spent more time painting than doing anything else. I have just loved picking up my paintbrushes, turning on some worship music, and just painting as I feel led. I've come up with some Well, God has painted through me. I believe there's one particular painting I've done called Aslan. It's this colorful lion that's breathing this golden healing oil. Again, what I've talked about in Italy. And part of that was inspired by that, um, as well as through a vision that a friend's daughter had. But anyway, I feel like he's rebirthing the creative. And the Lion of Judah is a part of that. And oh my gosh, I could go on and on and on, literally, about all the things that my friends and I have been talking about. But here is where I want to land with you. What is his invitation to you in this time? For me, the invitation has been a call to a deeper place, a deeper intimacy with him. You know, I was telling you the story of being in the prison and us sitting with God asking all these questions. Obviously, I just shared about the healing oil, but there was so much more that God said. And one of the things that he said to my friend was, he was asking this question, God, what is success to you? And God just said, it's intimacy with me. The most success is being connected to the creator God who breathed his life into us. The only reason that you and I are sitting here alive and breathing is because his breath of life is in us. And whether you believe that or not, I believe that to be the word of God and truth. And so I believe that the invitation right now for all of us is intimacy with him, is taking time that we've been given a lot of, creating space, doing the things that you delight in, Taking that Sabbath, I'm a big believer in Sabbath and the concept that God created the world in six days and then he stopped on the seventh day to rest and saw that it was good. For me, Sabbath is not sitting on the couch watching Netflix. It's not necessarily filling my mind with lots, reading books, doing things, but it's the thing that makes me feel alive and joyful and where I can delight in the pleasure of my Father and my Creator God. So during this time, Part of my Sabbath has been taking a bike ride every day. It has been like the highlight of my day. I've been loving it. It's also been painting. For you, that may be going on a walk with your family. That may be working out in your garden. That may be talking to a friend or to a family member you haven't talked to in a long time. It may be working on your truck outside in the sunshine. It may be washing your car. I don't know what that is for you. But Sabbath is important. And part of that invitation in intimacy with him is learning to rest our souls, our souls to be at peace in him. So before we go today, I just want to leave you with a couple of things. First of all, the reminder that God is at work, even in that cold, damp, dark place that we may feel like we're in, if that's what isolation feels like to you, God is right there with you. He's in our pain. He's in the struggle. He's with us. None of this is a surprise to him, and he is using it to wake us up and call us and invite us into himself, not out of condemnation, but out of love for us. Pure love. He gave his life for us because he loves you and wants to spend time with you. And so as we go today, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to actually just sing over you. And my prayer is that you would hear his voice singing over you. So whatever you come to the table with today, whether it's anxiety, fear, Maybe it's just delight and joy and you're really enjoying this time. Whatever it is, I speak life. I speak peace. I speak his love and his kindness over you.
When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name. Still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, every wave at your name, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, it is well with our souls because you are with us. Thank you that you are more real than anything that we can touch, taste, see, or smell, or imagine. You are the most real. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for your invitation to bring us closer to your heart. Thank you for what you endured this holy week for us. Thank you for the pain and the suffering and the sacrifice. God, we are so grateful that you have made a way for us to spend eternity with you and to live the abundant life now because of your presence with us. Because with you, we have everything that we need. We love you so much in your mighty name, the powerful name, the King of Kings, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hey friends, thanks for listening to today's episode of The Hope Adventure. Just a couple quick things before we go. First, as many of you know, I'm training as a spiritual director, and what that means is just simply coming alongside someone to help them connect with God and His presence. A lot of these questions I've referred to in the story that I was telling today, those are spiritual direction types of questions where you're really just creating space to connect with God. If that's something that you are interested in and need someone to come alongside of you as you journey, please reach out to me. You can email me at info at jbethanyanderson.com. I'd love to share more with you. Also, I mentioned a lot of my artwork and the creative things that I've been doing. Follow me on social media at jbethanyanderson on Instagram. You can also go to my website, jbethanyanderson.com, to find all my social connections. If you have any interest in any artwork in the season, something that speaks life and hope over you, take a look at my stuff. I'd love to share that with you. Also, lastly, if this has encouraged you during this crazy coronavirus time, please share this with a friend. Okay, I hope to see you back here in a couple weeks' time. See you then. Today's music has been brought to you by the Blue Dot Sessions.